Because the mushroom market is so diverse, you might not be getting fruiting body, you might not even be getting a lot of mushroom. So understanding how to read and interpret the label is very important. So welcome back to another episode of Mushroom Coffee that we're doing right here on YouTube and on Spotify, talking about all things mushrooms, all things mushroom supplements. And really, it's a way for Tegan and I to connect with Fresh Cat family, connect with the mushroom community, and just really have a good time overall. Today, we're going to be talking about mushroom supplement labels, supplement facts panels, nutrition panels, all the stuff that is really important for you to know if you happen to be shopping for a mushroom supplement. We're going to show a lot of examples of different supplement facts panels and just various things to look out for. And by the end of this video, um, you'll know a lot more than you ever thought uh, you could about supplement facts panels, specifically around mushrooms. You'll be a pro. You'll be a pro. So really excited to do that. Really excited to talk about that. First though, I did want to mention one thing. Uh, if you watch some of the other YouTube videos, you might know about this already, but we do have a brand new, this is not brand new anymore, it's pretty new, ebook. This is the physical version of the book. We don't have the physical version for sale though. That's true. It's but true. we do have an ebook and you can get it right now or after you watch this episode for free. All you gotta do is click the link in the description. If you're listening on Spotify, go to one of our YouTube videos and click the link in the description and you can get Mushroom Powered. It is uh, over 130 pages packed full of information about medicinal mushrooms, functional mushrooms. We dive deep into each of the different species and it's a really, really good resource. So if you're interested in this topic, it's a great place to start. So I just wanted to mention that right off the hop. Yep. Also links to a bunch of um, references and recipes. So. Yeah, and some of those recipes are really good. I know you've made a few of them and Carla has made a few of them. And that's the best part about the ebook. You're right. There's links to all the references and stuff like that. So um, it's absolutely cram packed full of information. Uh, I think people really like it so far. So yeah. So yeah, if you are looking to dive more into the literature, the research, download that ebook and give it a read. Yeah. It's a great place. And again, it's called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi, which we'll be talking about today. But specifically, again, we're going to be talking, talking about a supplement facts panel. So when you're shopping for a mushroom supplement, when you're looking around for mushrooms for your health, you're going to want to flip around at the back and look at that label. And we want to tell you what you should be looking for. But first of all, I guess we should talk about the difference between supplement facts panels and nutrition facts panels. There is some pretty important distinct differences. So why don't we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. And every product you will buy will either have a supplement facts panel or a nutrition facts panel. But the facts panel is a place where it can show you the serving size, servings per container, the ingredients and the amount per serving. So that's the basic for nutrition facts panel and supplement facts panel. That's where your information you're going to get. Um, now the difference between nutrition facts panel is usually on foods and beverages, where supplement facts panel are typically more on just straight supplements. But the main difference you're going to find is that the nutrition facts panel is going to have a set of mandatory nutrients and it's going to show you the amount you're getting compared to the daily value. So look at the nutrients, look at what you're going to get in that serving, whereas the supplement facts panel is going to show you the ingredient used, the plant part used, and the amount per serving. So a little bit different there, whereas you can't name the plant parts. If you're talking about mushrooms, you cannot put that in a nutrition facts label, but you can put that in a supplement facts label. So. Right. And on a nutrition facts panel, like for a supplement anyways, you're going to be looking at the ingredients as well, right? Yes, um, definitely. Not just the panel. Whereas, Which will be located underneath. Exactly. Whereas on a supplement facts panel, it's like most of the ingredients or the active ingredients anyways are in that main panel. Right? Yeah. And all the active ingredients. All the active ingredients. Yes. Okay. And then there, even on a supplement facts panel, though, there will be a little bit extra where you can put other ingredients, which we're going to talk about as well. Because that is also a very important part when you're shopping for a product. You also want to look at the other ingredients section. Very important part. Because a lot can be hidden in there. Right. But I guess the bottom line is that the supplement facts panel is, uh, is, on the label and everything needs to be on there in a very specific way and it should contain the bulk or the vast majority of the important information that you're going to need to know about that supplement because there's a lot of stuff you can put on the rest of the label um, but the, the supplement facts panel is like the super important part that you want to look at to really understand what it is in the supplement. Yeah and what you're getting what functional ingredients are there they'll be listed in the supplement fact facts panel as the source and also the plant part used, which is very important, especially when it comes to mushrooms, because the mushroom market is so diverse, 
you might not be getting fruiting body, you might not even be getting a lot of mushroom. So understanding how to read and interpret the label is very important. Right, and so for example, for fresh cat products, we have a variety of different mushroom products. We have like our pure extract products, and we also have these drinks. So on the drinks, we have a nutrition facts panel. So it does tell you what the mushrooms in there are, but that's just an ingredients, and the rest is stuff like fat, cholesterol, sodium, et cetera, which is all zero basically, because it's just a drink, but it shows that information there. Whereas on- And then uh, just one part to put in there. And then the functional ingredients included in this are listed in the other ingredients section. So that's the big difference between the supplement facts panel. Right. Yeah, because in the supplement facts panel, you have the functional ingredients listed directly in the panel, shows the amount per serving, and then other ingredients will just be anything added. So the capsule, um, some companies will use flowades, which we'll get to. That would be the main difference. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so that's brief overview of supplement facts panel versus nutrition facts panel. So chances are, if you're watching this or you're interested in mushrooms, you're going to be looking at a supplement facts panel. So one thing that you should be looking at is the amount of mushrooms that is actually in the supplement and the extraction ratio uh, that is used for that extract, if it is extracted. So that's probably the most important thing you want to know is how much mushrooms is actually in the product. In the serving. In the serving, yeah. right. Yeah. But that's where things can get a little sneaky. So why don't you talk a little bit about extraction ratios and how that can show up on the supplement facts panel in a little bit of a sneaky way. Right, so not everyone follows regulatory labeling guidelines. So sometimes you see some funky things going on in supplement facts panel. So what is supposed to be done on a supplement facts panel is the amount per serving listed for each ingredient should be the amount that's physically added to the formula. So per capsule here, well, let's do it on something that's not a blend. Um, turkey tail, for one serving, there's one gram in this. I don't know if you want to hold it up there. So the actual amount you're getting per serving is one gram of extracted turkey tail mushroom. Whereas sometimes you'll see something and maybe we'll pop an example up on the screen in a little bit is some companies will bypass these regulatory labeling guidelines and they will put the amount of pre-extracted or yeah, the dry weight of the mushroom before the extraction as the amount per serving, whereas the extracted amount that is actually ending up per serving is a lot less. So it's almost a reverse. It's very misleading and dishonest way to label. So you always want to be watching for that. And usually there will be an area in there well where it will say something like equivalent to 200, 200 and yeah. Well, we'll take a look at a couple yeah. of examples, but <laughs> I, I guess the main thing I want to say is, so when you're making a mushroom supplement, a lot of the times you do an extraction, right? Yes. So yeah. you will take a, a certain amount of turkey tail, for example, of dried turkey tail fruiting body, you'll put it through a hot water extraction, okay. and the end result is an extract. But it might have taken, let's say, six pounds of turkey tail fruiting body to make one pound of extract, or for example, six grams of turkey tail fruiting body to make one gram of extract. But in the extract, you don't want to say that it's six grams. You want to say that it's one gram of extracted fruiting body. So I think that's where some of the confusion can get through because for example, you know, how do you fit six grams of mushroom into a capsule that only holds one gram? Well, you can't. Or 500 milligrams. Or 500 milligrams, yeah. but you'll say it's equivalent to. So let's take a look at some labels here. Or do you want to say something first? I was just going to say a visual representation of this. This capsule is 500 milligrams of extracted chaga. Um, whereas to get the extract, you're going to be using an amount much larger than that. So some companies will say, let's say this is 2,400 milligrams in weight. And this is, or let's say this is 5,000 milligrams in weight. This is 500 milligrams. Let's say we did a 10 to one extraction. So some companies will label there's 5,000 milligrams in this capsule in a serving size but it is coming from a 10 to one extract equivalent to 500 milligrams, whereas they should be saying there's 500 milligrams per, for this serving. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that's clear. <laughs> um, it's clear in my head, but that probably came out really weird. No, let's make it, so let's just, let's, let's take a look at a label just okay. to, to show you. So let's this is that. a label, a random label we, we pulled off the internet and um, I'm looking at label number five. I'm looking at label number five. Okay. So it's a it's a lion's mane extract, and it says uh, right here on the label it says lion's mane twenty four hundred milligrams. So you think, oh great, there's two point four grams of lion's mane in the supplement. But then you read down below, and it says equivalent from 
240 milligrams of a 10 to one extract. Right. So the actual amount of lion's mane extract in this um, serving size is 240 milligrams or a quarter of a gram, a little less than a quarter of a gram, even though it's representing 10 times more lion's mane in the serving size. And you know what is actually confusing about this is typically capsules will fit around 500 milligrams, depending on the size of the capsule, the density of the product. Um, so the fact that there's only 240 milligrams in three capsules really makes me wonder how much of those other ingredients are actually packed into this capsule. When you look at the other ingredients, you can see there's rice flour. Um, and then the other two following that are would be very small quantities, I presume. But you would imagine how much rice flour is actually filling up the bulk of that capsule if only 240 milligrams in three capsules is the actual lion's mane extract. Right. Um, another thing that comes jumps out to me in this label is so they have the common name and Latin name, great, but it also doesn't say the plant part used. Is this fruiting body? Is this mycelium? Is this mycelium on grain? Like what, what, is, what is being used? What is the plant part? That should be labeled. Right, and that is you know, in incredibly important because it can make a massive difference in terms of what compounds are in the, in the final product. So you know, not, necessarily, not necessarily a bad thing, but you look at this and you just don't really understand exactly what it is. And the other thing that's important right. to understand about extract ratios is you can have a really high extract ratio. It just means you had a bad extraction. So for example, if it took you 100 pounds of lion's mane to get one pound of extract, well, yeah, technically that's a hundred to one extraction ratio, but that just means there was a poor extraction. You didn't get as much out of that extraction. lion's mane as you could have. Right. And then you could you could then somehow multiply the amount by 100 times and put that on the supplement facts panel. Not very much an accurate representation, in my opinion, of, of what might be going on. That's true because the active compounds in there won't concentrate down to the same way that you're exploding that concentration ratio. Okay, but it's not always done this way, right? Sometimes it will be represented in a different way. Again, we're just showing examples here. So here's another example, Tegan. So let's look at uh, label number six, which oh, I think right. you have up here. So this one um, in, so for example, so lion's mane, Parisium arenaceus from a 10 to one extract. Again, these are all 10 to one extracts, which again makes me- It's a little suspicious. It's a little weird, right? It would be weird to have a 10 to one extract from all of them. For every single one. Yeah. But uh, that's fine, but it says equivalent uh, to 2,500 milligrams, but in the actual amount, amount of serving, serving yeah. it shows 250 milligrams. The amount from the extracted weight. Right. Yeah. So not the starting material, but the actual amount you're getting per serving. So would you agree, in your opinion, is this a better way to do it if you're going to use the extraction ratios? If you want to show the extraction ratio, this would be the way to go for sure. Yeah. Right. So again, we look down the list. So um, let's look at organic reishi, again, and dermalucidum, my favorite mushrooms equivalent to 500 milligrams organic reishi, but it actually only lists 50, 50 milligrams. milligrams coming from, yeah. So if we add all this up, let's see if we can do some quick math, 250, Ooh. 300, 350, 300. 380. So 420 milligrams of mushrooms um, from about 4.2 grams of mushrooms. So In one capsule, which makes sense because t capsules typically fit about 500 milligrams, depending right. on the density and size of capsule. Right. Yeah. So actually you would look at this label and think, well, that actually, that makes a lot of sense. I'm getting 420 milligrams of mushrooms. It is a concentrated extract, which is probably a good thing, right? Depending on what you're looking for. So um, this label is kind of doing the same thing, but doing it in the reverse way. And actually, in my opinion, it's a lot, uh, a better representation of what's actually inside of there. Yep. Cool. I agree. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, another label we looked at really quickly, I just want to highlight was, let's go back to label number five really quick. Okay. There's a section down there that says other ingredients. Yes. And I think that's an important thing to look at and an important thing to understand as well if you are in the market for a mushroom supplement. So what kind of things would show up in the other ingredients section? Other ingredients would be anything added like a flow aid or a filler or even just the capsule itself. So flow aids are usually added in very small amounts. Oh, there go the dogs. Flow aids are usually added in very small amounts just to help the mushroom extracts flow through the machines and get filled into the capsules properly. Um, whereas fillers can be something added in larger amounts. So something helping to bulk it up or something that is in the final product that can't be extracted. So say you're using a mycelia based product and it's grown out on 
oats or rice, so it's a mycelium on grain product, they will list that oat or rice substrate down there because it can't be extracted from the final product. Exactly. So again, you explained what flow aids are, and I think, uh, you know, flow aids are just a they're usually not used in very high amounts, right? No, they're usually in very small amounts. And again, you explained that mushrooms are kind of, when you extract them, they're kind of sticky. So sometimes you do need a flow aid to help them flow through the machines into the capsule. Yep. Um, so they don't get all gunked up and, and mess up the extraction or the, the capsule filling process. Right. Yeah, they're very common. Yeah. Um, but with the other thing you mentioned was looking for mycelated grain or things like oats or rice, et cetera. Fillers. Yeah, and this is the best way to tell if you have usually a fruiting body. I mean, sometimes it will say, it should often say right in the supplement facts panel what part of the mushroom is yes. used. Yeah. But if it doesn't, you can look at the other ingredient section and say, okay, if it does say something like mycelated rice, or if it does say something like, um, in this case, uh, rice flour, it's a little bit ambiguous, but this is the best place to look and see if it is a mycelated grain supplement, because if there's grain in there, uh, you need to kind of let people know. Because for example, I don't know, people could be, Maybe using wheat grain. I don't, I don't think a lot of people do that, but maybe it's using wheat grain and people will want to know that or oat grain or, or what have you. Soy or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, this one though, label we're looking at right now, does say rice flour. So I'm assuming that is used as a filler. Right. Yeah. So this might very well be a fruiting body extract that uses um, rice flour to bulk it to up. To bulk it up because the serving size is three capsules, but there's only 240 milligrams of mushrooms. So something is taking up the bulk of the rest of the capsule space. Right, so let's look at another label that has an other ingredient section. So I'm looking at label number four. Okay. And um, there's a couple things that pop up to me or pop out to me from, from this label. Number one, um, well, it, so it, it does show, it actually does show what part of the, the mushroom is used. So it's cordyceps mycelia. It doesn't say whether it's sinensis or militaris, but cordyceps nonetheless, uh, reishi fruiting body. It doesn't have the, the Latin names or the scientific names of the mushroom. Uh, there's also some other ingredients. So obviously this is some kind of blended product, which is, which is awesome. And then in the other ingredient section, that's where you can see, uh, what part is used. So one thing that's interesting to me, uh, so it shows reishi fruiting body and mycelia. One of the other ingredients is myceliated brown rice. So this is something that's typically called like a full spectrum supplement, which sounds like it has everything, right? But really what it is, if you leave myceliated grain long enough, mushrooms want a fruit, right? And eventually they will form little fruiting bodies inside of the package of the container, inside of the bag that they're growing in. They might not get very big, but technically- Little pins. Little pins, yeah. right. right. Technically they're fruiting bodies. If you grind that all up, you can say, yeah, there's fruiting body in there, there's mycelium in there. And there's also myceliated rice, which is what is shown on this label here. Yeah, but you, really from this, it's unknown how much fruiting body and how much mycelium you're actually getting. It's very unknown. Right, so in a situation like this, you might want to know, okay, well, how much beta-glucan or how much, maybe in, in terms of reishi, you know, how much triterpene is actually in there. So that would be another thing that you'd really want to look for on the label is those active compounds and the percentage, either the percentage or the milligram amount mm -hmm. of active compounds that are in there. So that will give you the best idea of potency right. from those mushrooms. Right. Yeah. And different extracts will have different mushrooms will have different levels of beta glucan you know not all mushrooms have triterpene like for example turkey tail has a really high concentration of beta glucan so in in this one it's 35 percent so there is about you know per gram of turkey tail extract there is 350 milligrams of fungal beta glucan uh, whereas something like a chaga there is only 150 milligrams per gram of beta glucan but there's also triterpene in there as well which is listed on the label. So that's only in there because it's a dual extract. You know, we did a hot water extract and an alcohol extract. So you can really um, pull those compounds out and then test for them afterwards to see how much is actually in there. Right. Um, yeah. And that's an important thing we didn't really talk about, right? The level of act act active compounds uh, showing up on the label, but that's another really important thing to look for. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. <laughs> um, Fun stuff. So I'm going to see if there's... What other labels do we have There's some other at? labels we wanted to take a look at. Okay. See. Um, oh yeah, some labels, they won't tell you how much of each mushroom you're getting, but they'll tell you an overall, what this blend, the weight of the blend. So why don't we pull up that label? Right, so let's look at label number one. Label number one. And I can just... Um, I'm sympathizing with people. If you're listening to this on Spotify, it's not going to make a lot of sense. So you might have to go watch it on YouTube. Um, but anyways, label number one. So it shows this is per serving, which is about a thousand milligrams or one, one gram. gram. 
um, but it's a proprietary blend, which again, nothing wrong with a proprietary blend. Lots of supplement companies do this, not only in mushrooms, but all over the place. Mm -hmm. But it just makes it a little bit difficult to understand how much of each mushroom you're getting. I guess you could assume that it's, you know, an even distribution between all of these 10 mushrooms, yeah, for example. You can't assume. But you can't assume no. because, for example, you know, cordyceps is more expensive to make than something like right. a shiitake or uh, is there oyster in here? Oyster, for example. So in this label, it could be 90% oyster mushroom. And a sprinkling of the rest. And you wouldn't know. Right. You wouldn't know. Right. And and the reason they Chances don't... Chances are, if it's a proprietary blend, if you reach out to them, they won't actually tell you the the percent of each ingredient in the proprietary blend. Right. And again, it's totally fair to do that, but yeah. we're just trying to show you the information so, so you understand that, hey, if it says a proprietary blend, a lot of times you don't really know exactly what that blend is. And there's lots of different reasons for doing that, but it just, yeah, when you when you read a label like this, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult to understand what's actually in there. And I think with mushroom supplements, with any supplements, with any food, really, anything you're putting in your body, you probably don't want to know what is in there. You might be taking it for a specific purpose, et cetera, so. Also with this label, um, they don't have the part used. So it's unclear if it is fruiting body or mycelium based product. Ah, yeah. that's a really good point. Um, but what you do know is that you're getting one gram of a mushroom blend. That right. is what you do know from this label, so. Right. You know what I do like about this label? What? There's some woodier mushroom in there, Ricularia yeah. ricula. You don't see that very, very often, no. very commonly. And we did just do a video on five functional mushrooms that aren't as popular, but should be superstars. Woodier was one of them. Oyster was another one of them. Um, and we talked about mitake as well. So all of those are in here, which is kind of cool. 12 great mushrooms. What other labels do we have to look at? Let's take a look. We might have a couple more. At, let's take a look at label number two. Ooh, okay, label number two. Yeah, and I wanted to show this one because I think it's an actually, it's a really good label. I think it's super clear. Um, what's in there, it shows... Um, Mushroom name, plant part. You have the common name, Latin name, plant part, amount per serving. And we're assuming the amount per serving is coming from the extract. That's what it would look like. Exactly. So it shows, for example, you know, uh, reishi, which is the common name, Ganoderma lucidum, which is the Latin name. It shows that it's a fruiting body extract. It shows that there's 100 milligrams in there. Those are like the four things that you would want to know. Exactly mm -hmm. what mushroom it is, what part it's from, if it's extracted or not and um, how much there is. The only yep. thing I would say about this label, and actually if you look down further, you can see beta D glucans obtained from mushroom fruiting body, which is cool, and are guaranteed at 30% per serving of extract powder. So it's telling you as well how much beta glucan is in there. The only thing it's not saying is, so I guess we would assume this is just a hot water extract because there's right. no triterpene. So it's not saying if there's a dual extract, alcohol extract, et cetera. But other than that, I think you could safely uh, look at this supplement facts panel and understand exactly what it is that you're getting. Yeah. So more so than some of the other ones we've looked at. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> For sure. I'm gonna give this one a thumbs up though. I like this one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What should we, is there, there's a couple more. I think. There's a couple more. Let's look at uh, label number three. We're just kind of okay. looking at some random ones now just for, for fun that we pulled off the uh, wide world of the internet. So this one is for a chaga mushroom, uh, a chaga uh, supplement. And the interesting thing about chaga, as you can see here, it's not really like other mushroom fruiting bodies. Chaga is actually kind of a, I mean, you can call it a fruiting body because that's, you it's know. It's a common the, way to refer to a mushroom. Right, and it helps distinguish between something like chaga that's just on mycelated grain or wild harvested chaga fruiting body. It's actually a canker, um, but, but it's a combination of chaga mycelium and birch wood all kind of meshed up together to make this amazing, one of my favorite Mushrooms, uh, really cool thing. But so on this label, it says chaga mycelium and fruiting bodies. Um, I don't really know what that is. Yeah. Because I don't know how you would get that. Because interestingly, chaga can't really be cultivated the same way. Like reishi, reishi you could easily get mycelium and fruiting bodies. Because if you grew reishi on grain, mm -hmm. the mycelium would cover the grain, eventually it would form little fruiting bodies. Yeah. If you ground all that up, you'd have mycelium, you'd have fruiting bodies, and you'd have whatever grain it's on. Chaga, doesn't really do that because chaga is not going to fruit in a bag. And the chaga fruiting body is something that is a little Very bit elusive. mysterious as well. <laughs> so I just thought this was an interesting label. I mean, I assume it is uh, mycelated grain chaga, but again, you don't necessarily want to assume, right? right. Uh, it's hard to know what it is. I wonder if we, if we would have seen the other ingredients down there 
uh, if it would have helped us to identify the substrate being used also. Yeah, I don't but know. I don't see that clipped in there. So. Good point. This is just the supplement effects panel. But yeah. um, okay, let's take a look at another one. Oh, we already looked at that one. Okay, did we look at that one too? Let's I think six. maybe we look at seven. The one with the spelling mistake is the one we haven't. Okay, at. yeah, this is another yeah. one that I want to show. Okay, so look at uh, this is label number eight. Yep. Um, so you have the mushroom, the plant part is there, common name, Latin name ish. You also have a proprietary blend. Yeah, I would say this one wins the award for the most confusing one. It is. There's a lot going on. We'll say that. <laughs> there's a lot going on. Um, the, there, there's a number there's of spelling mistakes. On. And right. I guess, I just want to be clear, it could be maybe, well, I don't want to say it's a different language because Granoderma, Ganoderma, Lucidum. Ganoderma is, the, yeah, shouldn't be confused with any other misspelling. But so. There's a number of spelling mistakes and it's a little, it's it's quite a bit confusing. It's just again, as confusing. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't understand what I'm taking if I, I was, I was using this. Um, but it does show the different amounts, which is good, mm -hmm. you know, 266 milligrams of each, and then the proprietary blend. So you don't know how much you're getting of that proprietary blend, but otherwise you're getting a pretty good amount of uh, stuff. And yeah. A couple spelling mistakes, which is, well. Yeah. Should be caught, but you never know. You never it's know. Easy for spelling mistakes to go by, so. Sometimes those things slip through the cracks. Right. Um, but yeah, I just thought this would be be a fun one to share. Um, that being said, you know, like really what we're trying to do with this video is just, um, if you're shopping for mushroom supplements, uh, I guess for the show in general, we wanna like provide you with as much information as possible so you can make a decision and figure out something that's, that's right for you. I mean, there is a lot going on in the mushroom supplement space. And everyone is gonna be looking for a different product. To right. Suit their needs, whether it's fruiting body based, mycelium based. We just wanna give you the tools so you can read and decipher and make an informed choice for yourself. Exactly, because that's what it's all about. It's for uh, figuring out what it is that is right for you. Yeah. So I hope that was helpful. I hope uh, you are now a smarter mushroom supplement shopper. And um, is there anything else that you wanted to go over in terms of mushroom labels, supplement facts panels, anything like that? Uh, another thing you can look for on labels is organic certification. So some ingredients will be listed as, you know, organic and then plant. Um, but another way you can look at is if there is a certifying body backing up the organic claims, that is always good to have. So something that is capsule based because there are capsules that will allow for organic labeling language to be used. Some capsules won't, so the company won't be able to actually use a certifying body. But if your capsule allows for this organic labeling language to be used, um, you will typically find it written, where do we have it in here? Okay, certified by the certifying body and then a little logo. So and there is many different certifying bodies on the market not saying one's better than the other, there's just many. And all of these certifying bodies will allow you to label your product as organic, USDA organic, or made with organic ingredients, depending on how many organic ingredients you have. So something like a um, organic mushroom extract powder that doesn't have a capsule in it, obviously that full ingredient is organic. So you can be labeled with USDA organic label logo on the package. Um, but if there is a capsule involved, that will count for some of the weight of the final product. So it would fall under the 95% certified organic ingredients. And so, yeah, you may only have the certified organic buy made with organic ingredients, that kind of claim. Yeah, and just to clarify, when, you, when you're talking about the capsule, you're talking about the actual capsule shell itself. Yeah. So that yeah. little piece that holds all the mushrooms in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and you're saying that that capsule shell can be made up of something different depending on it can yeah, be. Yeah, there's of... many different types of capsule materials. So some are vegan, some are not vegan, some are plant-based, some are gelatin. Yeah, there's a variety on the market, but there are a few that will allow organic labeling language to be used. One of which is pullulin, pullulin. Yeah. which is, um, yeah, for example, on our labels, other ingredients is pullulin capsule. Pullulin is like just a, basically like a veggie cap. And it 
is it's a fermented tapioca fermented yeah. tapioca yeah, thank you for that uh and that is what allows um for the language of um organic certification yeah for us to be able to put the logo there right yeah right um now you will see the certifying body listed as well some companies will just say organic rishi organic chaga won't be backed up by a certifying body um if but they may still be able to show you proof of organic certification from the ingredient supplier. So you could always reach out and ask for that. Yeah, it might not necessarily be a bad thing. Yeah. Just, yeah. Because it should be honest. So it, it doesn't mean that they're just saying that. Like it should actually be an organic ingredient. But some companies will go further and back it up with a certifying body. Yeah. Yeah. But that is one of the great things about mushrooms in particular is like mushrooms can be grown organically uh pretty easily mushrooms just like to you know a lot of mushrooms just like to grow on pure organic hardwood uh they don't take a lot of chemicals they don't take any crazy things to try and get them to grow mushrooms just want to grow so uh a lot of mushrooms are organic but the certification uh is a whole different thing which as you mentioned you'll often see on the label yeah great another thing to look for another thing to look for so we covered supplement facts panel nutrition facts panel looking for the amount of mushrooms that are in there the type of plant part or type of mushroom part that's in there talked about extraction ratios and uh other things to look for in the other ingredient section finally other things that you might want to see in the label again i hope that was useful i hope it makes you a much smarter supplement shopper a much smarter mycophile which is really what we're trying to do here on mushroom coffee which again is a show that we're going to be doing every single friday at 11 a.m mountain time so if you're interested in mushrooms then be sure to tune in. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. And again, one more time, if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and download our free ebook called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science, and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi. So it's absolutely free. Just click the link in the description and you can get this 130 plus pages of absolutely packed with mushroom information. Ooh. That'll make you a uh, much smarter mushroom person. Yeah, so we hope you go and check out some nutrition facts, supplement facts panels, and put your skills to use, to awesome. the test, put your skills to the test. Cool. All right. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.